We've got a small group of people. We're going down to Garmish. But there she is. There's the uh, there's the beast. It's quite exciting going onto the continent to ride. What have they ra they rated you 170 on the autobahn, those panniers? There <laughs> goes Neil. Nopper, what's a nopper? But we are on the autobahn. Are we sure this is it? Are we sure this is it? We sure this is it? Cheers, guys. What a day. Ooh. I want to see that finished. <laughs> It is day two, gorgeous weather. I was expecting it to maybe be wet today, but we've absolutely lucked out and it's uh, absolutely gorgeous. I'm starting off on the MXR today. We've got, we're on the B500. This is the, gonna be the best part of the trip, the twisty through the B500. So we're gonna stop every 40 minutes and swap around on the bikes. But uh, I'm starting on the M this morning. I've bags the DM. I've got my towel on it. I've had my towel on it since 6 a.m. So jumping on the XR, the MXR, you can tell that the uh, the foot position, the actual riding position is different to the standard XR. The pegs are a bit further, f sort of forward and a bit higher. Well, it's no surprise they're a bit higher, I suppose, just to give a little bit more uh, ground clearance. Bars feel similar, I think. I I'll, I'll better tell more of a comparison when I immediately jump back on the uh, the XR again. But uh, yeah, yesterday, I didn't want to ride this just on the motorway because I mean, look at the size of the screen. It would been, it would have been hard work. But uh, today, it's a different matter, and it, I guess it's the same thing with with the GS and and the and the XR. You know, yesterday on the motorway, the GS was unbelievably good. I mean, on the bit of de-restricted autobahn, I was doing 115 on it in comfort, in comfort. You know, it's inc it's an incredible mile munch and you've got so much room in the seat you're a little bit more locked in on the xr but you get to something a bit sportier you get to some twisties and everyone wants to be on the xr so as always you know it's a little bit of a compromise isn't it as to as to what you take away touring if you can put up with the xr on the motorway and sort of limit yourself to sort of 85 as, as sort of a maximum speed i guess if you had the big touring screen you could go faster and it would be easier but it's, you know, even the riding position, it's just not as comfortable as the GS. But then when you get to your destination, B500, you're going to want the, uh, you're going to want something a bit more sporty. And this is the beauty of this trip where we, we swap in between the bikes because uh, we've got the best of both. It's what you really need, isn't it? To buy bikes with your mates and all get yourself insured on everyone else's bike and just all swap round between everybody's bike. One thing I learned about the MXR, remember when I said in my review, I'll stick at the top if you haven't seen it, that it was a little bit flat, it felt a little bit flat compared to the M1000R, you know, the mid-range. Well, I was watching a uh, Brent tuning video in the States, and he's tuned one of these, and he said that the, do, if you remember, the S1000RR, with the US map, it used to have a big flat spot in the middle on the US market bike. The Euro bike didn't have it but the US bikes had this sort of flat spot. Well, apparently, with the M, the flat spot is even on the Euro bikes, which is a real shame because it means to fully unlock this bike and make it as punchy as the M1000R, because the M1000R is way more punchy than this. Sort of that sort of pull you get. Once you get to eight grand, then this thing flies. But that bottom end is definitely less punchy than the M1000R, the naked bike. So you, it means you really have to flat flash the ECU to bring it to full power, which is a, a bit of a shame. So it means sort of invalidating your warranty if you want the bike to be, to give its true performance. Yeah, something I learned from uh, Brent Tuning. Very, uh, very knowledgeable guy. woo -ha! The brakes are so, so good on this bike. So amazing. Well, the front brakes on this thing, 
unbelievable and what is incredible with this bike you're, you're, you're in quite an upright position you're not lent over the front of the bike so you're not really loading up the front wheel but you still get an incredible amount of feedback from the front end on this bike despite the fact you've not got a lot of weight over it I don't know how BMW have done it I don't know how BMW have done it Hoon machine this thing Apparently these are all like cameras, they're all cameras these, so you've got to be a bit careful. We might have just gone through them cameras a bit too fast. Okay. There was two cameras right at the bottom there. Oh, was there? Yeah. Uh, front face again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's two cameras right there, we might have just gone past them a bit too fast. Well, we went that it's, a, it's a 50 limit, I think, like 50 Was you? Oh, I might have been going a bit faster than that. A full tank, blue skies, and the B500. Life is good. 50 limit. No taking the George Michael. Yeah, you can keep your GS now. It's so careful with the cameras and stuff. Well, you know, what people say, you're better off really not going on the B500 coming off on the other roads because it's just yeah they've just killed it really the cameras and stuff of you know a 50 kilometer speed limit it's like 30 miles an hour isn't it it's 30 miles an hour on this race track is just criminal we've got two well, we're following this right down i think we're headed to some sort of lake for lunch can't remember the name of it Oh, all become clear. All will become clear. 50 is, well, it's for a town's fine, isn't it? Look at these houses up there, look. Imagine living. Living in this part of the world. All right, Neil? It's still a mile per hour, not kilometers an hour. Ah, was it? Well, probably get, yeah. Oh, you, you did 50? Yeah. <laughs> I've got all, the, all me thinking I was sticking to the speed limit. Then... <laughs> I won't stand up in court, Neil. Uh, that bike's dipped to miles an hour, and he's going for all the, the 50s in miles an hour, thinking it was uh, kilometres an hour. That's no excuse. That's no excuse. Absolutely blooming gorgeous. The Black Forest. This is the Black Forest. That's why we had to have the Black Forest Gatto last night for dinner. While in Rome, while in Rome, you can't beat a bit of Black Forest Gatto while you're in the Black Forest. It's just another lock. Come on. Well, I've bought my drone and everything. I've, I've packed literally everything with, with all that storage I've got on the XR. But it's where they're going to get time to stop and use it because it's half nine now. We've got to be there for three. You know, when you start getting your drone out and fanning around, time just disappears. Oh, looks like we're going to be quite sedate on this little ride. It's a bit of a shame. I mean, we've got to be, we've got to be we're sensible people. But it would be nice to unleash the beast around here a little bit. We've only done 30 degrees lead angle, it's absolutely despicable. Oh, the roads are just amazing, aren't they? Aren't they amazing? So, tarmac's beautiful. The bend, the sweeping bends. Incredible. And the speed limits are diabolical. Right, so we're going to swap back straight back onto the uh, the M Sport XR. So it'll be really interesting to compare it directly to the M. Oh, angry! Yeah, you can notice that extra weight with all that gear on. Definitely. Yeah, it's just lacking a little bit. A little bit of power, of course. This is 170 horsepower, it's 201. The MXR. The brakes are still pretty good. 
the brakes are actually pretty good, but there's more suspension dive, you know, definitely more suspension dive. This whole suspension is much firmer on the M. Yeah, this is just dialed back a little bit compared to the M. You get a little bit less feel from the tarmac as well, because it's slightly softer. Yeah, the M's just a little bit more in everything. Like this is still, you know, you can have luggage on the back of this, which is quite a big bonus, isn't it? Just uh, stopped to do a quick battery swap. We're an hour away from lunch, I think. Don't know where we are. We're sort of not on the B500 anymore. We're on the L422. Going for the lunch spot. I think there's some lake. Not quite sure what uh, <laughs> why Matt's unpacking there. But uh, yeah, loving it. It's sort of we're out of the sort of forest area a little bit now. A bit more on sort of plains. But the roads are still absolutely lovely. But the speed limits are also very restrictive, unfortunately. 36 degrees to the left, 33 to the right. Which is quite abysmal, really, considering the roads we've had. I'm such a hooligan. I'm such a hooligan. Just enjoy it for what it is. Just enjoy a lovely cruise for this beautiful scenery. Without wanting to go flat out everywhere. You bloody hooligan! The road surfaces are just so good. So smooth, so beautiful. But you compare this to you know what we got in the UK, it's just unbelievable. I don't think I've seen a pothole yet. Bit of autobahn action. Even with all the luggage on and the top box. Bloody stable, this is quite surprising. Think I'm fat. <laughs> 20 to 12. Time for some luncheon. Oh, uh, yeah, picking the vines, picking the grapes. Give a wave. Hello. <laughs> Job, isn't it? Very nice. Got your free bottles. I think this is supposed to go for the, wi the wilder man. The wilder man for lunch. Or, or, or maybe not. Too shabby, is it? Lake Constance is what it is. Kind of a nice little uh, bar restaurant for a snack and a drink. <laughs> Halfway from home, I picked up my phone. I stared at your face, but it's not your tone. So that was Lake Constance, really, really nice sat there on the, by the lakefront there. So it was a case of, let's sod going, let's just stay here for the day and drink beer and cocktails because that was really very, very pleasant. Bit of uh, curry verst, curried sausage and fritz, oh, very good, could have stayed there all day. So now we've got three hour ride to Garmisch now and then uh, We've got to get for the presentation of the GSA, I think for four o'clock, so I'm hoping to arrive about three. Mm. God, it does feel nice and light, this. I don't know if that's just because of it's lighter, but I suspect it's more to do with the luggage. I mean, this, this luggage is rated to 170 miles an hour. That's why it's so small. Well, we'll see, we'll see if it stays on. <laughs> Didn't need anything in that now, did you? So we're back on the M for the, the final leg. Well, but maybe not the whole way. I think we've got three hours to go yet. So it's a fair old, it's a fair old whack left to do. And uh, it's one o'clock, because I think this bike is still on UK time. I don't, yeah, I think it's one o'clock. So 
So we wanted to get there for three. Looks like we may need to either pick up the pace or we'll be a bit late. So I'm on, if we're picking up the pace, I'm on the bike for picking up pace. Don't worry about that. It doesn't feel massively different to the standard XR. It feels lighter and more agile. But is that because it doesn't have a top box and, and full panniers with a top box? Probably has a lot to do with it, but you know, it's, it's definitely changed direction quicker. The suspension's different, you know, the f f seating position is different. I think the bars are exactly the same. And I'm not sure it even feels any more vibey. They mentioned the gearing could be different as well. I know this has got a different size tyre. This has got a 200 section rear tyre. It's 190. On the, on the standard XR but from a comfort point of view there's, there's not much in it really tiny little bit tighter in the leg but nothing to worry about go on now not even the MXR could have made that one I don't like the rear brake on this, the rear brake's very poor, I don't know why. Oh, it just makes you want to go this way. And I guess that's the other problem with it. It just makes it eggs you on to go fast. Which is maybe not what you need. <laughs> I don't need any egging on. This bike truly is, you know, a super bike on stilts more so than any other bike I've ever ridden. I may be riding the new uh, RS Multistrada. There's a gentleman who's got one of those who's offered me to come up and have a ride. I think he's also got an MXR as well. Sorry, I can't remember your name. He's based up in Bedford, so I'm going to go up and see him. And he's even got like the full Akropovich on the RS. He's got the full, the full system for it. So I'm going to go and try the RS. But for me at the moment, this MXR, I've never ridden a bike like it from a true sports bike. It feels like a sports bike, you know? It's, uh, it is exceptionally good. It's uh, probably about half hour since we last spoke and uh, we've been caught in some quite heavy traffic really all the way we're now sort of up towards those mountains I think we may just be stopping for petrol now because I've got 74 kilometers left but we're, we're getting it's all got a little bit Swiss looking all the houses and everything it's all got a little bit Swiss looking all of a sudden oh E30 M3 that's a motor I just want one of them always wanted one of them could never afford one now time for fuel I'll just stretch my bottom because I get a little bit sore. Might be time for GS. Well, we've had another little bike swap. I'm back on the trusty Tramontana GS. I'm playing full of a leader now. I've got the sat nav. Everyone's following me. Oh, bike shop. Bike shop. It's like a bit of a custom chopper shop. Oh, yeah, okay, mate. Lovely. Coming across here. Yeah? We went, I went to buy a bottle of drink while well, we filled out a fuel back there. And I suddenly realised my German was completely inadequate. I was like, what's even thank you? A Fiederzane, bye bye, isn't it? I think. A Fiederzane pet. <laughs> a Fiederzane. Guten Tag. Is that thank you, Guten Tag? Or is that morning? Oh. I need to uh, do some brushing up on my German. Look at this. Absolutely gorgeous. Looking more and more Swiss all the time. Let's get some air. Breathe it in. Breathe in that Alps air. It's great to be alive. Got Matt in front of my little uh, white beauty. the autobahns are like two lanes you think only like a three lane there would be an autobahn wouldn't you not just two lanes it's like a dual carriageway unlimited speed limit but you could still you can't get caught for speeding but you can get caught for dangerous driving so if you're being reckless 
then you will get done. I think someone in a Chiron got done for doing 270 miles an hour. So keep up with that. That is more or less everything there. Look at that. Not that. Look at you. This is probably going to be the most scenic, well, it definitely will be the most scenic part of the trip. So, it's up so white. It's like so must be all the chalk in the water, it's like completely got a real white tinge to it. Let's try and sit down again. Ah, Bit of traffic, got stuck behind these two uh, locals. And this brings us back to the whole, is filtering legal in Germany? And I think it's, uh, I think it is legal to filter if the traffic's moving, I think. If it's not moving, it's not. But I just want to see what these, how these locals, they were filtering just a second ago when the traffic was moving. As soon as the traffic stopped moving, they, they stopped filtering. Go on. Off you go. Look at that. Incredible, isn't it? <laughs> Get impatient back there. Oh, it's very kindly right over. But, uh, these two aren't there. I guess you're not allowed to cross these lines, the white line. If you're in the UK, you, you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> there he goes. But look at the views, it's stunning. Well, the battery's going to go any second, but look at this. Absolutely incredible through here. That was a little ski lift there, look. Uh, yeah, all we got there. Look at this. Beautiful. Well, we have arrived. We're at the uh, hotel. Really nice hotel, actually. It's absolute carnage. So gutted, my uh, my GoPro ran out of battery because there's just bikes everywhere, carnage everywhere. But we're all parked up outside. There's the bikes. There's my white trusty steed. Well, they're, they're all my steed for this trip. But uh, yeah, it's a nice hotel. I will give you a bit of a tour later on. But uh, yeah, we're going to wander over to the festival now. We've got the unveiling of the new GSA. I think we're a little bit late. I think we're running a little bit late. So we need to get a shifty on. So we just literally chucked on the clothes. And uh, we're meeting Saffron from MCN is here. And I don't know if that's her sat on the sat on the bench there and maybe meeting outside at quarter past four and it's about 20 past now either that or they've all gone without me look at this fella comes to a bmw convention or an africa twin like richie vader Unveiling the new GSA at the top there in a minute. That was cool. Give it back. Give it back. It's the launch of the world premiere of the all new R1300 GS Adventure. Wow! This is really a surprise. What? <laughs> Incredible bikes. I'm speechless. Yeah. Well, we've managed to get a little bit of an exclusive. Just kept crowds absolutely everywhere. But we've managed to get around the back of the uh, coned-off area 
and here are the bikes. I'm, I'm sure you've all, by the time this video comes out, you all would have seen them. But uh, I like the little details. When they, when BMW posted up that first picture with the smoke, I thought it looked horrendous. I thought it looked like a jet ski. But I think actually, in person, I like it. I like the little details, like a soft, sort of soft rubber material on there. The front luggage is cool. I'm on board with the headlight. I love the headlight. And that front beak is slightly different as well, I fancy. Colour coded handguards. Tank is uh, like a lacquered, a lacquered sort of brushed finish. And you've got the trophy. Get my toilet all up, please. Oh, yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Cheers, everybody. Yay. Look at that. I decided to go home a day early because I just couldn't face doing that ride home in uh, in one hit. Ah, go on, little one, then. Little shade. Right, that was the most, perhaps the most expensive fuel I've ever purchased. 224. Oh, God's name's going on. Fair enough, sort of set off. And you're just in that moment and you take a breath and you breathe it in and it's uh, just making sure I've got everything. And it's like food for the soul doing this on a bike. <laughs> 